Hi, and you're now with the Forerunner Chronicles. We're doing this video because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about who Satan is. A lot of people are saying the devil is this and Satan is that and Lucifer came from here. But you know, most of the time you're just hearing a whole lot of half-truths. But right now we're going to give you the whole story. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, it lets us know there that Lucifer was once an anointed cherub that covered the throne of God. He was actually set in this high position of authority and honor by God himself. He used to reside on God's holy mountain and God had given him the authority to actually have leadership over all of the angelic hosts. But one day, something happened. In Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 15, the Bible says, For thou was perfect in all of thy ways from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. Lucifer was perfect from the very day that he brought, was brought into creation until one day, iniquity, evil, was found within him. Now the Bible lets us know in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12 something of how this mystery of iniquity came into being. In Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which this weak in the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the, uh, I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend Above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. That's what Lucifer said in his heart. But do you understand exactly what was taking place inside of his twisted mind at that time? Well, the Bible's going to interpret to us just exactly what all of these statements here mean. Let's start back at Isaiah chapter 14, starting at verse 13, and we're going to break it down. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Let's pause right there. I have a question for you. Why would Lucifer say, I will ascend into heaven, when he was already residing in heaven? And I ask you to please keep in mind that Lucifer was in heaven at this time. Because when Lucifer was casted out of heaven, he no longer retained the name of Lucifer. He was then called the devil and Satan. He only had the name Lucifer when he was still in heaven. So once again, I pose the question to you. Why would Lucifer say in his heart, I will ascend into heaven if he was already in heaven? Well, the Bible lets us know in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 6 exactly what he was saying. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 6, the Bible says, But the righteousness which is of faith, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, which is to bring Christ down from above. Wait a minute. So when Lucifer said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven, what he was actually saying was, I am going to bring Christ down from above. I'm going to take Christ down. I'm sick of him, Lucifer was saying. Why does Christ get all the power and all the glory and all the honor? What about Lucifer? He was tired of Christ being so worshipped and he wanted to take Christ down from his position of high exaltation. That's what he meant when he said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. But let's go forward, because there were some more twisted thoughts that took place in Lucifer's mind. For he said after that, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's what it says in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Now what does it mean when Lucifer says he will exalt his throne above the stars of God? What is or who are the stars of God? Well, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 21, the Bible gives us the definition for our answer. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 21, the Bible says, The mystery of the seven stars that thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Stop. So right there we find out that stars are symbolic for angels in the Bible. 
So when Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, he was saying that he will set himself up as king over all of God's angelic hosts. Not just as a leader, but as the king of all of God's angelic hosts. But how does he design to do this? The Bible lets us know with the phrase that comes after that. It says, I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Now let's take this apart piece by piece. That word sit in its original Aramaic or Hebrew means that he will not just sit down like I'm sitting down in this chair right now. It means that he's going to set himself up as ruler, as the authority, as the king. He was, he, so in other words, Lucifer says, I will set myself up as the judge, as the ruling authority on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Now, what is the mount of the congregation? Well, that word congregation there in its original Aramaic and Hebrew means a gathering that takes place at a set time and it is designated for a sign. Let me say that again. That word congregation in the original Aramaic and Hebrew means a gathering that takes place at a set time and it is for a sign. Now, does the Bible speak of any gathering that takes place at a set time and that it stands for a sign? Yes, it does. Let me read it to you. In the book of Exodus, chapter 31, and starting at, let matter of fact, let's start at verse 13 of Exodus 31. And let's read what it says there. It says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord thy God that doth sanctify you. Let's stop right there. The Sabbath we see here was a sign between God and his people to let them know that he was the Lord that sanctified them. But let's go on and read Exodus 31 and verse 16 and 17 which also say, Wherefore? The children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout the generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day God he rested and was refreshed. So we see here that the, that the amount of the congregation has to do with the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath is the time that God has appointed in the Bible for his creation to gather together. And it's at a set time on the seventh day. And it stands as a sign between God and his people that he is the Lord that sanctifies them. And also that he is the Lord that is their creator. For it says in six days he created the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day he did what? He rested and was refreshed. And the Sabbath also points out the fact that God is not just, he is the Lord God. In the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 20, it lets us know this. It says, And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. But wait a minute. In the book of Mark chapter 2, starting at verse 27, Jesus Christ himself said, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Jesus Christ is Lord of the Sabbath, which means Jesus Christ is the Lord God. It means also that Jesus Christ is the God that sanctifies us. It also means that Jesus Christ is the God that created the earth in six days and on the seventh day rested, blessed, and sanctified the Sabbath day. And Lucifer wants to set himself up as the ruler and the authority that receives the worship that Jesus Christ is supposed to receive on his Sabbath day. But how does Lucifer, or how did Lucifer design to do such a thing? He designed to do this by starting his assault in the sides of the north. Remember in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12, he said, I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north.